Essentially, we found five different major pieces of debris that told us that it was the uh, remains of the Titan. The debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. Adventurers Hamish Harding and Paul-Henri Najale, businessman Shazada Dawood and his son, Suleiman, and the sub's owner, Stockton Rush, all lost to the deep in an unsurvivable implosion. Authorities say likely occurred less than two hours after the vessel began its descent. Top secret US Navy technology picking up what's likely to be the sound of the disaster just moments after the sub lost contact on its way to visit the wreck of the Titanic. It is a catastrophic event that takes time within 20 milliseconds. Sadly, they wouldn't have even realised that uh, they were dying because they cannot process that uh, information that quickly. Cold comfort for friends and family of the missing men, hoping for a miracle. It's a terrible loss for us. He had sort of a childlike enthusiasm about this journey. Knowing that he's not suffering is, is important to us. Something everyone that's been to the bottom of this he thinks about, and uh, here it actually happened. As to how this could have happened, experts have been scathing about the Ocean Gate owned sub's design and safety mechanisms. The top players in the uh, deep submergence engineering community even wrote letters to the company saying that what they were doing was too experimental to carry passengers. Ocean Gate accused of ignoring calls to get the vessel independently assessed. Among the concerns, that it couldn't withstand the pressure four kilometres below the surface. I'm struck by the similarity of the Titanic disaster itself, where the captain was repeatedly warned about ice ahead of his ship, and yet he steamed at full speed into an ice field on a moonless night. Well, Professor Stefan Williams is a marine robotics expert and is here to give us his thoughts on what happened. Stefan, thanks for joining us. What's your theory on why this sub imploded? So from all the, the reading I've done and, and uh, you know, reports in the media, it looks like there's been a, a catastrophic failure of the pressure vessel on board this submersible. Uh, so the design of this particular vehicle's pressure vessel is a little bit innovative, a bit different from what's done traditionally, and involves a composite design of titanium end caps and a carbon fiber tube. And that's where the people would, be, would have been inside. And it looks like that some component of that uh, pressure vessel has failed. Professor, we now know there was a lot of contention in regard to that design and the safety around it, whether or not there was enough regulation. This was the former and the late Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush talking about his own project. I'd like to be remembered as an innovator. Um, I think it was General MacArthur said, you're remembered for the rules you break. And, you know, I've broken some rules to make this. I think I've broken them with, with logic and good engineering behind me, the carbon fibre and titanium. There's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. Can you talk to us a little bit more about those, that rule in particular and those two different fibres? Why don't we usually see them? Why is it such an issue? Yeah, so one of the challenges there is when you put the pressure vessel under pressure, so at great depths, those materials would deform in different ways. So the titanium will deform in a different way to the carbon fibre. And particularly as you start to cycle those materials through multiple dives, you may develop different pressure concentrations or you may have particular small faults that start to become larger issues and ultimately will lead to a failure like what we've seen. Professor, to the human tragedy, would these five men have had any clue that that was going to happen and, and would death have been quick? I've heard some reports that it appears that the um, ballast plates, which are used to lessen the weight on the vehicle, appear to have been jettisoned. So that would suggest that they may have had an inkling that something was going wrong. But from the time the failure actually occurred to the sort of the implosion would have been very quick and, and it would have been a quick end, I expect. This is a bit of a grim question, but given what we know now and what we've just discussed, would you have gotten on board that vessel and gone to that depth? Well, clearly in hindsight, uh, I would not have chosen this vessel to, to be going and doing this kind of exploration. There has been for a long time discussion within the community about the relative merits of having crude submersibles such as this, doing work in the deep ocean versus using remote tools. So, you know, I don't think this signals the end of crude submersible exploration, but I think there will be questions asked about the design of these sorts of platforms, the independent verification of new designs in particular, 
and you know maybe a little bit of, of regulation and and uh, some some really I guess soul searching about how we support this kind of venture moving forward. Incredible insights this evening. Thank you so much for your time, Professor Stephen Williams. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks. Mm. Well, this is death by misadventure, clearly, but you wonder whether that's the reason why it was attractive to these wealthy guys who went on it. Mm. They're thinking, well, only I can afford to do it, I, I will do it. Mm. I mean, it's ended in tragedy. It, it could have well ended in them coming back up and saying that was extraordinary. Yeah. It's they the took the risk. risk and innovation, mm. right? There yeah. has to be that mm. fine line. There's so much less scrutiny, though, of deep-sea yeah. missions than sending people into space, companies coming under the pump and all the safety around that. But it is so, so dangerous. I just wonder, you know, we, we obsessively watched this story and after 111 years, is it, is it time to let the Titanic lay to rest, mm. really? Mm. I don't think it will be. As long as there's a means, there'll still be... I know that this is, you know, so tragic, but there will still be people that would well, like to know what's on the depth of the sea. On there had been down to the Titanic about 35 times. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly an obsession. Yeah. It's in them and they're innately intrigued and want to learn yeah. more about the Titanic.